Let's solve this differential equation. Let's see, what do we have? 2xy minus 9x squared plus, in parentheses, 2y plus x squared plus 1 dy dx equals 0. Now, we're going to try to solve this one with the exact method. Okay, so if you already ran into this method, the exact method, and you're a bit confused that uh, why we take an integral, then a derivative, then another integral, uh, I made this little diagram over here that's hopefully going to help you understand what is the mechanics behind all these events. Now, before we get started with the actual problem, let me give you a real quick rundown of what is happening here. So, now you guys... Uh, should know that whenever we have a function and we take a derivative of it, we're going to get another function. But if we take an integral of the other function, we can get back the first one, right? So derivative and integral, they are kind of like uh, forward and backward of the same process. That is what we're going to be exploiting in this exact method. So what you see here is that we are going between these two functions. We are deriving, integrating, deriving, integrating, okay? That's what's happening between these two. The only difference is that we are using partial derivatives, not the regular ones, okay? Now, how are these two functions related? This is a function, let's call it a parent function, and if we take a partial derivative with respect to x, it'll give me m. And if I take a partial derivative with respect to y, it'll give me n. Okay. And of course, if we integrate, we get back here. And if we integrate, we get back here. Like I said, derivative, integral, they are backwards of the same process. Now, our problem starts right here. That's why I wrote it with the same color. n plus m equals 0. This is where my problem starts. So this differential equation is right here. So now we have to decide which part will be n and which one will be m. Here it is. I marked this one will be my m and this, the one in the parentheses, will be n. So, these two are the kind of like the children of the same parent function. These two came from this one right here. So far, so good. But we have to run a test on this function before we can be sure that this method can be used. Therefore, let's do our test first. And that test would be right here. We're going to have to take a partial with respect to x of my n and a partial with respect to m, a uh, partial of our m with respect to y. Okay, at first I didn't want to write this in here, but I want to keep it as clean as possible so it's not confusing. But my n is this one, so this is the one that is in front of the dy dx, okay? There it is. Let's perform the test. So we are not solving the problem yet. Right now, we're just checking if this equation, the where is this one, can be solved with the exact method. If our test says yes, then we can proceed solving the problem with what we're going to be showing here. So test, let's do these two. So my partial with respect to y of m, right here, we're going to solve it, we get 2x. My partial with respect to x of n, right here, plug it in, and I'm going to get 2x. Now, since these two are equal, that means that we are good. This problem is exact, and we can continue solving it by this method. If they are not equal... Well, you're out of luck. You have to solve it by different methods. Now, we got to the point 
where we can finally explain what are all these arrows. So, after the test we have two paths. We can either go this way or we can go this way. So, I'm gonna follow this path which is I'm gonna take an integral of my m with respect to x and get my function right here. Now after I'm done with this one the next step will be taking a partial uh, with respect to y and coming up finding my n then coming down this way taking another integral with respect to dy to get this one again. Okay so this one this one this one now on the second path you would be following the opposite or in the other direction you would take your n take this one the integral to get this guy partial with respect to x to get your m and use integral with respect to x to come back here okay that's why these circles exist up and down up and down which is jumping between these two functions with a little bit of twists and that will help us solve this problem. Okay, like I said, I'm gonna take an integral of my m with respect to x right here. I plug in the m, the part that I designated as m, simply put it in, take an integral with respect to x, okay, here it is, and this is the important part that we cannot forget. We will have a function that's left over that is in the terms of y because we are taking uh, an integral with respect only to x. Therefore we're gonna have this guy left over, a function in with respect in y, okay? Don't forget this guy. Now the second step, I'm going back from this function to get my n through a partial derivative with respect to y. And that's what's happening here with the same color, trying to color match it. Hopefully it helps guide us what's happening. So partial with respect to y of this one that we found right here. Plug it in. This is what we found, right? So partial with respect to y, solve it, we're gonna have x squared, this is the only term with y, this is, a, we're gonna take it as a constant since there's no y terms, and this one we have no idea what it is, so all we're gonna do is simply mark it as a derivative of h with respect to y. Now, we need to realize that we got back here to n, right? This is where we started. We started from this equation, we came down and we came back up. Therefore, whatever we found here, it, this is equal to the n that we have designated up here. So this equals to n, which is this, what we called this n up here. Now, we're gonna have to isolate the h prime in terms of y, put these two equals, and simply solve for h prime y. Now we're gonna use our last step, coming from the n down to this function again, but with an integral with respect to y. So uh, over here. That's what's happening here. I'm gonna take an integral of both sides of what we found right here. So the integral of the derivative of h in terms of y, and on this side integral of 2y plus 1. Here the integral and the derivative cancels each other, so all we have left is h in terms of y. Here we have 2y plus 1, which becomes y squared plus y, and plus a constant. Now I'm going to mark this constant with a k, because we will be uh, changing it as we go along. Now that we have found uh, 
our h in terms of y, we can come back right here and update our function. This one, right? So simply we're going to write it down. These two didn't change, but we can plug this in. That's what you see right here. These two terms unchanged and the one we plugged in. Now at this point we need to remember that this function is equal to a constant. Remember, uh, we can verify that whenever we take a derivative of this function, we get this one. And see, on this side, when we take a derivative of the right hand side, it will be a zero. So don't forget this guy. Therefore, we're going to come and take what we got here and put it equal to a function, a uh, constant, sorry. And now we have two constants right here, a k and a c star. These are just my notations. You can mark them however you like. And since we have two constants, there's no point in having them separate. We can simply put them together. And now I can finally use the C. That's why I didn't want to use it before I get to, got to this point. I, these are just temporary. And for my final answer, I can just leave it as C in the nicest form. Okay. Now a quick uh, review. If you got it, good. If not, here's a real fast review of what happened here. Our first step was right here. One, we're going to have to do this test, right? To make sure that we can use this method. Step two, we took an integral with respect to x. So we get this function. Step three, we took a partial with respect to y. To get n. Now we know that the n we got at this point is the same n that we started in the problem with. We can put them equal to. And then in the last step, taking an integral with respect to y, we can come back down here and this will help us determine our y. And then final step, write up our final answer by plugging this into it right here and taking care of the constants and that's what gives us our final answer well hopefully uh, this helped so uh, you understand better this problem and uh, have a good day